We've all been there. You find a model that you want to print, you wait excitingly while it prints and then it doesn't fit and you've wasted all that time in filament. In this video, we're going to be giving some beginner tips to help you scale your 3D printed cosplay helmets and armor to get that right fit. Let's do this. Hi, Tracy here from Astrocyte Cosplay. Sizing cosplay helmets and armor can be a challenge regardless of the medium that you're using. I know as a beginner, this was definitely a challenge for me. Anybody seen my Ant-Man helmet video? Scaling your 3D printed helmets and armor brings its own set of challenges and I'm hoping these tips will help you with your own 3D printed cosplays. We're going to be covering the use of calipers to get a more accurate measurement of different parts of your body, the use of two different programs to help scale and measure your 3D models, that being NatFab Basic and Mesh Mixer, and then printing of test rings to make sure that you're not wasting a heap of time and filament. When I first started 3D printing, I was trying to measure different parts parts of my body just with a ruler which wasn't very accurate and I have to thank Uncle Jesse as I came across his video on his cosplay calipers that he 3D modelled. This was a game changer. They allow you to easily measure your head, your wrist and then you just measure the point between the two marks with a ruler and this gives a much more accurate measurement. Uncle Jesse designed this to be able to fit on a CR10 size printer but there was a remix version on Thingiverse that fits on an Ender 3, which is what I have. I will link both of these in the description so you can pull whichever file you need. Now, if you don't want to 3D print this, you can easily make something similar with foam or you can even just buy calipers off Amazon or eBay. After finding your measurements, you need to take this over to a program to scale your 3D model appropriately. I've been using two different ones, one called NetFab Basic and the other called Mesh Mixer. NetFab Basic seems to be the simpler option, however, this is no longer a free program. If you don't have access to that, you can download Mesh Mixer for free. I'm going to be covering how to scale and measure in NetFab first. So if you don't have access to that, make sure you jump to the section on Mesh Mixer that you can do this in for free. So here we are in NetFab. This is what we're going to use to resize our Wasp Gauntlet. We're just going to drop in the original STL file. From there, we're going to use this um, new measuring tool. So we just click into there and we want to click on one side. So we're looking for the inside uh, measurement. I'm trying to click in a straight sort of line uh, to get a rough sort of idea of a measurement. It doesn't need to be perfect as we are going to print a test ring in the next step. So I will show you how to do that also. So we can also do it this way to get another idea, trying to get roughly straight. So you can see here in millimeters, we know how wide and deep each part of it is. So now using that as a guide, if we go back to our original one, going into part and going scale, we have a few options to scale. Um, we can specify a target size, but this is going to do the outside millimeters of the thing, but, uh, but we need the inside uh, millimeters. So I opted for the percentage here. So say we wanna do 125%, make sure that the fixed scaling ratio is on so that it sizes in all directions, the X, Y, and Z in the same motion. Um, so we just hit scale and that will up it. So now we can do another measurement to see if that's roughly a little bit better for our wrist size. There you go. And again on the other side. So we're doing that. And now you can see that we've gone from a 34 millimeter to a 43 millimeter. So you can continue to do this until you get the size that you think is going to fit your wrist. Um, and then we're going to, when you're happy with that, we're going to export the STL. So we go to part, export part, and we're going to export as an STL. With that done, let's jump over and have a look how to do this in Mesh Mixer. So here we are in Mesh Mixer. This is the free program you can use to measure your helmets and armor. I'm going to show you how to do this on this Moon Knight helmet that I've purchased from Bionic Author 3D. This will be a future build video. So if this interests you, hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when it's published. 
So I have done some plain cuts on this already as I do have an end of three. So I've had to slice it up to make it fit. We're just gonna remove this back section for the moment as we're interested in the inside measurements of our helmet. So just clicking on the section that we wanna measure, we go to analyze and units and dimensions. So we just click on one side, dragging to the other side that we want to measure. If you don't get it quite lined up, you can move that around. So that's giving us a, a real length over here of 168 millimeters. So if this is the size that you needed, fantastic. If not, we can actually resize our helmet to what your target size is. So if we hit done, and then we're going to edit and transform. So the best way to do this is probably using your X, Y, and Z measurements here and ticking on uniform scaling here. So say you just needed that a little bit bigger, you could go 1.1 and this would increase it up a little bit. Now then you could go back to the analyze units tool and then do a double check to see that you've got the right measurements again. Um, this is the easier way to do it because if you then need to resize the other parts of your helmet, you know that you can do it at 1.1 and you have the same measurements. Question for cosplayers, what are your 3D printing sizing fails? Leave a comment below. After you've gotten the sizing that you think is going to be correct, we're gonna slice out a small section out of that helmet or armor piece and print a test ring. We can do this using mesh mixer, and this will allow us to know whether that piece is going to fit without wasting a whole lot of time and filament. Now that we're happy with the sizing that we have, we want to slice out a section of this to print as a test ring. Now, depending on the shape of your helmet, you may wanna do it along the widest part so that you know that it's gonna like fit around your ears. Um, if it's something that hasn't got the bat taken off like this, like I'm doing, um, but it's a full helmet, you may want to slice off the bottom section so that you know it will actually go over your head as well. Um, so you might have to print a couple of test rings, but to do this, uh, we're going to use this edit and we're going to use this plain cut tool. So you've got this as a horizontal. And now in this case, that's exactly what we want so that we can move this line up to where we think that we want it cut. So on this model, probably something just above the eyes is a good idea here. And we want to slice, but keep both sections here. So, and leave that on, remeshed, refill, and go accept. And just here, we're going to separate our shells. So this will give us multiple shells here. So now we can see this one and we're just going, that's probably a little bit big for what we want as a test ring. So you're just gonna do that process again in creating a plain cut. And we just bring it down a little bit here and get that little bit there. Again, we will keep both except and then we're going to separate our shells again and now that gives us a nice test ring that we should be able to do so we would then just go export and save it down as an stl file now you don't need to do this on excellent quality you can up the layer height you can up the speed it doesn't need to be detailed it just needs to be good enough to be able to see if that's going to fit you we're going to continue doing this process until you get to a point where you're happy with the sizing of that model. So once you've printed your test ring and you're happy with your sizing, we just need to export this as an STL. You can export them as separate STLs. So you just need to click on the section that you want to export, hit export, and this is going to save it as STL wherever you want to save it. And that can be imported back into Cura or whatever slicing software that you're using. Please remember these are just tips to help with your sizing. Things will still go wrong, it's just the nature of 3D printing. If you print a wrong size helmet, use it as a display piece or to test paints or different weathering techniques. If you have to reprint, just try and learn from what you did wrong. So good luck and happy printing and I'd love to see what you're working on at the moment.